We had a fire on board Nomad, but before we get to that... In our last episode, Benny spent some father-in-law time by sanding the bottom of Nomad. It's quite a tedious and exhausting job, which takes forever. Ultimately, we found a guy and made a great deal and we experienced some overnight magic. Meanwhile, in Jersey City, I completed my first marine sewing project and can proudly present new Hurricane Safe winch covers for Nomad. Back to our fire. Fire is the number one cause for total losses of yachts, according to Patenius claim statistic. Uh, we didn't lose Nomad, it really wasn't that dramatic at all. Uh, some smoke, some deformed plastic and a burnt wire. Good thing, because it triggered us to took a much closer look to our electrical system and what we found called for action. Wires twisted and taped together in proper cable and fuse sides or no fuses at all. The main battery switches without function and so on. So we did burn a wire last time in our shore power panel because somebody connected an 18 AWG wire for a 30 amp circuit which makes no sense so everything has been blown I have now disconnected the wire so what I will do now I'll now disassemble all the chaos uh, put a proper wire in but at the same time clean all the contacts do rewiring and then hopefully I'll manage to get this in a more ordered manner uh, great job for today so I don't even have to dress up in working clothes It's about 400 euros, uh, US dollars. So we just refurbish it and I think we can get it done for... Well, we need some spare parts, but maybe 20 dollars. Ah, this is looking much better. So this is all the internal cabling now. Um, without the external connections uh, we've got new LEDs, uh, all contacts are clean, cables are in the proper size and I will now reinstall the stuff. And we got our inverter connected as well. connect the inverter to our uh, normal outlet anyway that's what we're doing I already pulled the cable from here and all the way up to the front going all the way back because this is where the inverter is okay now so I have recabled everything and put the proper wire gauges in as well as good terminals um, it looks a lot cleaner I also created like two bus bars there to not overload the terminals itself or the or connectors you should actually say uh, I have so far only connected one set of outlets because I'd like to label them and see which circuits the uh, different um, outlets are actually connected to and uh, shore power is connected and we are good to go for a First test. Let's hope it's not going to <laughs> not going to blow up, uh, but I don't think it will. Looks pretty good. So we have shore connected. Nothing else is getting us a weird thing. The terminal should be hot now. And we will actually test this with battery charger. Oh, look at this LED. It's nice and clean the way it's lighting up. Right, we're just waiting now for this sign to turn on. Oh, it just turned on. Great. So batteries are charging. Batteries are charging, it's lighting up. Now we'll figure out which outlet is connected. And then test the rest. <laughs> totally worth it! Yay! 
Yeah, my next two projects are salon cushions and curtains. And I already prepared one of our cushions with leftover fabrics I had. And this morning, uh, a few fabric samples arrived. We are looking for a very resistant upholstery fabric for our salon cushions because we have kids. And we want that both fabrics for the cushions and for the curtains that they match pretty well because we want to have a cozy, home-like atmosphere in our boat. It's 10.30 in the morning, but it's really, really dark um, and it's actually starting to rain. So it's probably quite some heavy rain, meaning I will do another day of electrical work today instead of fixing our underwater hull. Oh, 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 I better get going. There's some water coming in <clears throat> in the aft of the starboard cabin and we have not been able to find out where so far but it looks like we're making a breakthrough today because <clears throat> if you can see there is actually water here which leads to mold in our mattress and all of this and we need to seal this of course and I actually thought it was the stanchions but it looks like it's coming in from there somehow and now since it's all wet, I will be able to, to trace this back to the source. And I actually thought I had to give up on this a long time ago because I really couldn't find it. There we go. That's where the water is coming through. It's the water inlet for the aft water tank. And it finds its mysterious ways there. And then it was somewhat dripping onto some of these hoses. And that's how it ended up in the aft cabin. I'm so happy I finally found it. The fix is easy. Finding it is usually hard. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our battery setup and why we are changing it. So right now we have in total five batteries on board. We have a starter battery for the engine that is in there. We have uh, three batteries that are combined into a house bank, it's AGM batteries. And then we have one uh, starter battery for the generator. So it makes five in total. Uh, interestingly, the house bank, uh, the two batteries, um, are here. It's Duracell with uh, 200 amp hours and then we have one battery, it's an AGM Lifeline with 210 amp hours all the way in the back. So what you can hear from that already is these batteries have different capacities. Uh, also the battery in the back is way older than the Duracell that are fairly new and the way it's connected is that the charger is connected to those batteries and they are charged all fine. And then at our switch panel with all the battery main switches, this is where the off battery comes in. And there are quite some problems with the setup. The first problem, and you should really avoid this from what I've read, is that you have batteries with different capacities because the bigger battery or the battery with a bigger capacity will never get charged fully back up. The battery is basically losing losing its power from day one. You should always charge the capacities uh, fully uh, after, after usage. Uh, in general also the battery is older and what can happen is that the battery 
back there is actually taking down the batteries uh, in front of here and reducing the battery life, which makes no sense. Also, when you connect a battery charger uh, in a bank, the plus of the battery charger should go to one battery. And then when you follow the battery to the latest battery in the bank, um, this is where you should connect the minus. You should not connect plus and minus to one battery and then have the other batteries charged because somehow that gives you a more equal charge within the battery bank. Other interesting part is, and that's actually not a problem, it's just interesting, that the generator had its own uh, starter battery and it's really interesting because the generator has uh, obviously an AC uh, alternator you could say, so it's, it's creating AC power, that's its main purpose, but at the same time it has a DC alternator as well that is recharging the generator starter battery, kind of like the alternator from the engine. But I'm wondering why this is an additional battery and uh, it makes sense if you could say, you know, if the engine battery is depleted and the house bank is depleted, you might want to uh, have an additional battery to start the generator. However, if there's any problem with the battery, if the generator is not stored and if there is a fire back there and you want to cut the power, this battery is so far hidden that you will not even get to the battery switch on time because there is mattresses and there is boards and you have to unscrew everything. So what I will do, I will... Uh, remove this battery entirely and hook up the generator to the engine starter battery because then the engine starter battery is actually charged by the alternator as well as the generator and what we have done with the major rewiring of our battery switches I have one switch that if I flip it I can combine the house bank as well the engine starter battery so should neither the generator nor the engine start I can start it off the house bank and later we will install solar as well as wind energy and those will charge the house bank so I think the risk of running low is very very low and that leaves us with a little less weight back there and a battery less to maintain while Benny does all the work at the boat at the moment alone you're probably wondering where I am all the time. I'm keeping our little Captain Kiel entertained. And of course, I'm taking care of my huge baby belly. Since I'm in the third trimester of my pregnancy, it's not that easy anymore to move in a messy boat or even to sand the bottom of the boat. to our daughter, fiberglass our holes and get our bottom ready to paint. Thank you for watching Grow Sailing.